Tonight is the night. It's Pop Culture Saturday. <sighs> so, yes, yes, yes. We got to get you guys all the way together with what is going on in those pop culture streets. Yes. And, you know, this week was kind of a slow news week a little bit. We had to kind of grasp at straws to figure out like what to talk about. But we do have a good little lineup for y'all tonight. So we do. We do. So we're going to kick it off. I don't know how many of our listeners out there are loving hip hop fans, particularly loving hip hop Atlanta. But this young lady, you've seen her not only on Love and Hip Hop. Back in the day, she was on T.I. and Tiny show, um, The Family Hustle. I think she went on to do some other, she had a spinoff of her own. Uh, I think maybe it was her and Tiny. But we're talking about none other than Miss Shekana Joe. Yes. Apparently, Miss Shekana is not very happy with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta producers. Child, she went live yesterday crying and cutting up with Mama D. And you could tell I'm going to I'm going to put a little insert of the live for our listeners, viewers to watch. But we're going to talk about it. First off, let me give y'all history of where it started. So she kind of was a castmate on Love and Hip Hop that started doing um, family reunions where they would take cast members from all of the different franchises. So it would be Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Love and Hip Hop Miami. Um, I don't even think they do. They still do Lo Love and Hip Hop New York. I don't think so. They, I don't think they do, but I mean, on that family reunion tour, I know that Yandy and Mindy season. Yeah, they, they bring, they still bring back cast members because they even had Chrissy, Chrissy Lampkins yeah. from one of the, the actually the original yes. cast members from New York. So what they do is they bring them back, some of the castmates from all the different franchises and bring them together for a love and hip hop family reunion show. That's kind of like airs in between the kickoff of a franchise. So something to kind of hold the fans over. So apparently, and y'all, she kind of makes me laugh, but for me to honestly say I'm a fan is a stretch. But is she entertaining? Yes. Does she go live too much? God, yes. Child, aren't y'all sick of seeing her in that bonnet? <laughs> but I mean, I understand her hurt. I think that she may be a little naive for this game, but she kind of been around the game for a while. A lot of y'all may know that she was involved in T.I. Tiny scandal when the allegations came out that allegedly... Um, some women came through. Sabrina Peterson started it. That used to be Tiny's friend. And basically she, you know, we don't have the, all the facts. It, they, they were cleared. So really and truly it's irrelevant other than the fact that it appears that she was the spearhead of some people coming out saying that T.I. and Tiny had allegedly drugged and um, some ladies and took advantage of them. That was not proven to be true. So neither here nor there, that's completely alleged. She kind of had a lie where she considered herself helping them, but mm -hmm. what she said, in fact, was very hurtful to them. <laughs> and so because of that, they fell out. Anyway, it is she kind of thoughts that T.I. and Tiny since then have tried to blackball her, tried to mess with her career. But y'all, this particular thing here, that's all her or the producers. Um, I don't think T.I. and Tiny have any pull over love and hip hop. I don't think, but let me give y'all the, the, the premise of why she's so upset. Apparently, some of her scenes have been edited out of the current Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and then we started back over at Love and Hip Hop Family Reunion, when she got into an altercation with the castmate, Lyrica Anderson, and Lyrica slapped her, but they edited out, number one, what Lyrica said to Shekana. Number two, Shekinah's uh, response to Lyrica slap, whereas she did try to fight her. They edited it all out. So it basically looked like Lyrica slapped her and she took it. And she was very, very upset about that. She said the producers promised her they would show her fighting back. Yeah, it's ridiculous, but I'm just <laughs> giving you some premise. So fast forward to yesterday, apparently on this um, season of Love and Hip Hop, 
the episode aired on Tuesday. She was upset because a scene or scenes of her showcasing her new funeral home were edited out. And so because of that, she has quit loving hip hop, though she said it when the stuff got edited with Lyrica too, but she supposedly has walked away from loving hip hop. So we will no longer see her. Since then, they've said that they've edited scenes of her out of the episode. Child, let's take a pause so we can let y'all see the clip. Then we're going to come back. Is that always so when it come to me? Me being edited out, me being shitted all to the side, man. Fuck that shit. They got that shit, man. <laughs> I think they need to... Um... We don't need to do nothing in front of me. I'm good. I get I it. Think, I, I think stand on it. I get give, it. I don't have no storyline. I think they need to give everybody their fair shake. Man, I ain't got no storyline. I ain't got nothing going on. I okay, guys. Bria, what are your thoughts? I mean, the crying to Mama D. Um, I can tell that she's very, very hurt. Um. Yeah. I didn't watch the live, but I got little quick notes from it, basically. Um, it's not, I, and I really don't feel like it's far-fetched. I feel like T.I. does have a lot of power in Atlanta. I mean, he's king of the South, the king of the city, everything. So it wouldn't be far-fetched for me to believe that he spoke with the producers and has the enough pull to get, you know, a favorable outcome, whatever. That's fair. Um, Yes. And, and so I, <laughs> and when you like really listen, it seems like she's been done very wrong by T.I. Mm -hmm. and Tiny. T.I. would constantly bully her, refer to her as the hell, um, mm -hmm. embarrass her frequently. And so, you know, and, and there have been, and this is also in the midst of the whole King fiasco where he's like, well, I know who y'all really are and this and that. So it's, it seems like T.I. and Tiny just can't catch a break. <laughs> and it, and it's, I'm inclined to believe some things and this is all alleged now. I'm not trying to confirm or, deny, but it seems to be that they, they aren't as great of people as they portray themselves to be. It would oh, seem yeah. to I mean, yeah, I can subscribe to that. I mean, heck, they've shown footage of T.I., some of the things that he would say in jest to Shekinah that would come off as extremely disrespectful, yes. very demeaning. And I mean, for that matter, the tiny too. So it's not like, Absolutely. shoot, yeah. So it's not like it's far-fetched that, you know, what she's saying, particularly about when she's saying out with um, Tiny, how he would belittle her. That I 1,000% believe. Like I said, it's been clipped, like literal... I know it's documented <laughs> that it's documented that he, he sincerely did do that mm -hmm. but I think that the truth well okay let me just say my opinion and then we're going to move on because this is not something we need to spend a ton of time on mm -hmm. um but I do think I think a lot of it is that she kind of does not really bring a whole lot to love and hip-hop um she's she doesn't want to sh um show her dating life She's mm -hmm. usually kind of that plant in between scenes where she kind of keeps the stuff stirred up the messy friend but you know, it gets old. People want to see a storyline, right. and she just doesn't seem to have one. And right. though, yeah. right. see, I haven't and, watched. I haven't watched um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta or any of the franchise in years, so I don't know how she is on the show. I don't know what her performance is like or whatever. But it does. It seems like she's typecast as the messy friend. Yeah, and that's just what that she part. provides. And if that's, and then she should be a supporting. I mean, she could be a supporting cast member as well. I'm. But see, I think but, that's kind of not where like it is. Title. Yeah. And yeah. where she wants to be is she wants to be highlighted. She's right. she's and, and whereas and they they, you know, they and, and that's reality TV, right? They will film for hours. You don't know what's gonna make it on the cutting room floor. Right. That's all reality shows, right? right. So shout out to Shikana Joe. Um sis, if this doesn't work out for you, you can certainly take your your brand, your platform, and 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 do other things with it. I know you're on Instagram, you started some other things. So wishing you much success. Maybe love and hip hop's just not for you. Moving on. Okay, so Miss Kim Kardashian, we need you to come come front and center. 
it has been brought to alleged actually's attention that you, ma'am, are tone deaf yet again, and you have hopped on to the TikTok challenge, of course. So I'm going to take a pause. We're going to listen to some audio. Um, and um, let you guys decide. So, anyway, give me one second to load this up while I'm doing that. Bri, did you get a chance to see her little TikTok? <laughs> I did. I did. Um, <clears throat> I have opinions about it. Um, but we can we can wait until after it plays. Yeah. It's, you know. But yes. And so um Yeah. I mean somewhat semi to her defense. Mm -hmm. It is a big TikTok challenge. She likes to do whatever is trending at the moment. That's her thing. But uh yeah, no. But she went the wrong route with this one. She, she did. really did. Yeah. That was there were plenty of angles she could have she could have gone and there um, are. <laughs> she she went yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry just let me no oh, my sorry guys let's take a pause we're gonna we're gonna upload it so that you guys can check it out and then we'll come back and comment on it I'm Kim Kardashian of course I have all my magazine covers covering my walls. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I have my mannequin with my custom measurements in my glam room. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I have my beauty campaigns on loop on a big TV wall. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I have 3D models, my brain and my plane in my office. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I have a tanning bed. And a red light bed <laughs> in my office. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I have a product shrine in my office. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course my whole office is custom Rogoans. I'm Kim Kardashian. Of course I'm launching lip liners in 15 different nudes. Okay. Oops. So Bria, what did you think about that crazy TikTok challenge Miss Kardashian hopped on? Well, um, like you said, it just, it seems like she just wanted to put her little contribution, you know, that's what they're, they're influencers. That's what they do. They have to jump on these trends. And so <laughs> it's like, she's, she's the sister of the self, self-made billionaire, right? Um, this family, they don't really have, they don't, you know what, I, they, how do I put this? They're very out of touch with, because mm -hmm. yeah, they've, but they've amassed all of this wealth, right? And so if you, it's just some things a billionaire is accustomed to that us regular folk will never know. Um, now, with that being said, the regular folk are the people that buy her products or the people that watch her shows right. and all of that. Right. And she knows this because she was, she got that tail tore up before about making some crazy comments about how you just need to shut up and work. You just need to, right. you know, when, I mean, <laughs> Miss Lady, what have you done? I mean, your own daughter put you on the spot and was like, well, what do you do? Mm -hmm. I mean, you basically sit there and you look pretty and make millions of dollars. So, I mean, that's really easy for you to say. But anyway. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Anyway, and I think the one that that most people, I mean, yes, it was tone deaf. It was all of this. But then she got a lot of fire for that, for I have a tanning bed in my yeah. office. That was the one that really ticked off a lot of people got the environmentalist saying girl what you've got um you know the people who already commented on the out of touch comment saying girl what and it's just and not to mention chloe had melanoma um a couple years right. ago and right. 
anybody that knows that the ultraviolet rays that comes from tanning beds can cause skin cancer. And so it just, it just was wrong, 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 all the way around. I mean, to exploit your, your wealth, we know that that's what Kim is. I mean, we know what she's got. You know, we know she's extremely wealthy. The family is period. But in a day and age where people are struggling to buy food, mm -hmm. to, to be able to put gas in their car, to take care of their families properly, housing is at an all time high. For you to like flaunt, I mean, right. I see it both ways. Like you said, she just wanted to hop on a challenge. She thought it was cute and chic. I don't think she meant any harm. Certainly not. But no, it's just she's tone deaf. Like she, she's, she's not. Very tough. She's so far removed. She's yeah, very removed, removed. And she commented back on the the UV um or the tanning bed fiasco, and she said, "Well, it helps with my psoriasis." Again, environmentalists they came back and were like, or not environmentalists, but science biologists whatever the the, the skin ones dermatologists they Dermatologist. were like well yes that okay but no uvb phototherapy is what is good for your psoriasis she claims she uses it for her psoriasis and right. they were like in that tanning beds they emit uva so you're still not really so you, you're right. No, no joy there. That that did not exactly right. So that's been debunked too. And so you know she she's trying to do all this damage control, but eventually, like I said, we are in the age of the 2020s. People are seeing who these people really are. I mean, she's made it pretty known that she's materialistic. She's removed. She doesn't care about what you poor folk have to say or what you poor folk have to deal with. Um, she's going to, of course, make a apology and an all white background and make you feel with like perfect lighting, this, right? Right, with perfect <laughs> lighting and make you feel like she's this pure angel that just didn't, you know, mean any harm. And, you know, her manipulative tactics that she can, <laughs> you know, that she uses because you can't get this powerful and stay in that position that long without being smart about how you can manipulate people you're right and so and so she is she's going to make her little iphone press release <laughs> and then with her it's little white back, with her back, white background and being so sorry and so apologetic and the next day she's going to do it again so it's it is what it is <laughs> that's just who she is that's who she is yep so more to follow there just wait on that apology tour yeah with the perfect lighting bria I i'm with you there so guys, moving on. Um, Kiki Palmer and Darius Jackson. Continuing saga of a couple that just didn't make it that are now going to have to figure out some way to co-parent their son. Well, a few months ago, Kiki Palmer had um, had to put in or um, had to put in a restraining order against one Mr. Darius Jackson. Um, she has alleged that he was abusive to her physically um, and that she felt that not only she, but their son Leotis was also in danger with his anger and jealousy issues. Um, and part of this protective order that she had, um, and right now it's still in a temporary phase and good through mid July, um, but part of that order was that he was to surrender any weapons that he had. And he did that on November 11th. I think the order was good as of October 22nd, November 11th. He, he turned in his gun and, um, the, um, other, um, you know, like the magazine, the 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 things that go with the gun. He surrendered a Glock 34, magazines, a speed loader, <laughs> a cleaning rod, a liter literature manual, and a Glock case. So he has turned over his gun and all of the things that went with it. Um, and basically, he also has has come out also with text messages proving that she, or alleged that she's also been abusive to him as well. Um, I have that that he released and I'm going to read some of it and then we're going to talk about it. Um, 
it's a shame but so basically what he released this was a text these were a series of texts from her um that went to him very long so bear with me guys um it reads i'm really going to have to pray on this because i'm just so sad and triggered to that deeply lonely and isolated place in myself where I tell myself no one in this world understands or loves me. I feel I'm not capable of pure and good love. And these are the energies I'm now feeling and questioning and doubting. I'm just so sad. I feel so lost and it hurt so bad because I thought I was so clear on so many things. I'm ashamed of how I behave and I'm sorry that I was not who you needed me to be. I'm really sorry because I tried so hard. You have no idea. I wish you could see into my heart and my mind, but I know only God can, and that's okay. That's why I love God, because I know that's the one that knows me the most and knows both of us the most. I just pray that I can have peace on the situation. I just get so sensitive and become so shell-shocked on the inside. I know when I love, I love hard, and that's why I didn't want to be in anything. Then I tell, then I fell for you and fell harder than before. And I'm scared. I'm going to just spiral and spiral and spiral again. I feel so stupid. I gave you so much control over my emotions and this saddens me. I lost myself in trying so hard to keep you and hold on to the space that I felt we shared. In that moment, in the alley, when you were walking away from me, I was just so soul crushed. The feeling that I felt, I can't explain. And I'm still sitting in, in this very moment. IDK, why it was just so hard for me to understand you walking away. All I saw was every deep moment we had ever had and how I couldn't understand you turning your back on me. I had no space for your humanity and immediately tried to possess you, but you are not mine. You are God's. And if you didn't want to share yourself with me anymore, I should have respected that. And I'm sorry I didn't. You're not an object and I can't, I cannot be so unhealthy at unhealthily attached to you i'm sorry for hitting you i'm sorry for being afraid to lose you that turning into my and that turning into me acting out of fear and desperation that was not the best me that you received and i'm sorry for that i am mad at the situation i'm mad at myself i'm deeply affected and afraid because it's such a deep heaviness that i don't want to feel anymore it's not just your fault nor job to alleviate it from me. I honestly need to pray on it. I just hate how exposed I can feel. I'm just sad and sorry to be texting so much. That's what I truly hate when things like this go down. I got to be here at work. I have no time to just sleep and heal. I was up all night. I forgot all my ish at home. I'm in every single scene. Yet I did this all to myself. I'm sorry my texts are coming out of order. Y'all, that's sad. Um, it's even sadder that he exposed that. But, I mean, she's also come out with her allegations. Um, she, so again, I was telling y'all that this, this is a temporary restraining order and temporary sole custody that she has of their son, Leotis. And she was granted that in November of 2023. So that's why he was, he actually... Surrendered the gun November 11th, but he had to show proof in court this week. And so that's why it's come out this week. Um, and so basically she had said that he had slammed her in the room, um, had put her face in the ground as she was going down the stairs, grabbed her face again and slammed it side to side. I mean, there was several things that she alleged that he did that was violent as well. So it's, you know, one word against the other. Um, Bria, what are your thoughts? Then I'm going to come back and let you guys know kind of where I'm at with it. <clears throat> um, I feel like it was a very tumultuous relationship. I feel like abuse or more me, you know, that word. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it could have possibly been on both sides mm -hmm. um it all goes back to i mean kiki she like I, we we have we've talked about this before where oh, yeah. we she defended her choice about wanting to date men that were not quite on her level mm -hmm. um, and 
it's, you know, it's been studied that when a man feels inferior to his partner and by way of financial um, provision, uh, it's not usually good. It usually has a negative effect on his psyche and he wants to try to bring um, her down to his level. And usually that is in, because a man is physically stronger, usually. So that it usually manifests itself in, in that way is what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say. Um, I, you know, it, it just, it sucks. The only person I really truthfully feel bad for is the baby. Agreed. Um, you know, that's, he's in the middle of all this. And I know that he's being used as a pawn, you know, by, I would say, both of them at this point. Um, it's just unfortunate. It really is. I agree. Um, first off, let me say that I do not condone um, any kind of physical um anybody putting their hands on anybody on either side so there's that um I do like Bria I do agree I believe that clearly based off of just what was submitted on both parts that there was actually a tumultuous relationship both sides mm -hmm. um I do agree that she should have taken the advice given to her by one Mr. Steve Harvey that she probably should start to look it doesn't have to be someone in the industry, but someone that maybe matches her success. But love, love knows no financial um, threshold, uh, you know, so you love who you love and that's fine. But you also, when you're someone of her fame status and, and um, her level of success, you either have to find a man that's okay with you being in the spotlight or one that can match your energy. And yeah. And Darius it, is neither of those. Neither of those. And that became apparent with the whole Usher thing. Um, now, could did I think that was a bit far? Maybe. But again, I, you know, that's something that I feel like should have been, been able to be able to talk through. Um, respect mm -hmm. levels, people's boundaries, all of that. And so that comes with having mature adult relationships. I just don't think they're good for each other, but my prayer is that they can come together and learn how to coexist and to be healthy parents and a healthy co-parenting relationship for their little boy. Um, that baby deserves that. And so thoughts and prayers out to Kiki and to Darius um, and particularly for little Leotis. And so as more things unfold, we will continue to report on that, but he is complying with the order. And so we'll see how that all pans out. So um, next we have um, Mr. Chris Stokes and Monye Morton. Y'all, this has been ooh, um, years, like literal years of, of allegations um, that were started by one Mr. Rasby um, of the group B2K. There was, over the years, many, many allegations that Mr. Chris Stokes had um, allegedly, you know, did acts of essay on some of the members of the group B2K, as well as Marcus Houston and the young men that were in his group as well. Um, it, it, this been going, and particularly Raz B had brought a lot of light to it over the years, doing interviews, um, telling his story. He was widely um, criticized because Raz B has had, it's been in the press a lot. Um, he definitely deals with some trauma, some mental things, but those also could possibly be, you know, as a result of some of the things that he's been through. But it appears now that Miss Mon Yee Morton, who is Chris Stokes now, ex-wife, has come forward confirming Raspi's um, allegations. 
And let me just, I wanted to give Raspi's um, actual name, his name, let's see. It's Demario Rasby Thornton. And he's actually an, um, a cousin of Chris Stokes. Right. So he's a family member. And um, he was very vocal again about the alleged essay as a member of the group. And Marcus Houston was also thrown into the allegation. So not only was it alleged that it happened to Marcus, but Marcus alleged was a part of the essay as well. Um, so, like I said, some of his interviews were kind of graphic. Again, you know, there were other people that kind of jumped on the bandwagon, but nothing, no, none of these allegations have been um, proven to be true. At this point, Miss Monye Morton, who is the ex-wife of Chris Stokes, has come forward with a statement on social media, and it states, I married him in 2004, just days before I gave birth to my fourth child. He has faced accusations of SA that I know to be true, but parties are unwilling to come forward and confirm them. I can confirm that he committed these acts, and it begins with acknowledging what I didn't want to accept. I married a perpetrator of such crimes. Now it's time for me to liberate my spirit and open up about it. For the past two and a half years, I've dedicated time to self-improvement, working on my mental, physical, and emotional well-being, often in solitude. At this point, my heart's desire is for every victim, including myself, to heal and live long, healthy, productive lives. I seek justice. She did hashtag Chris Stokes, hashtag Marcus Houston, hashtag accusations, hashtag truth, and hashtag reality. So um, let me just say that she has been naturally drug on social media i mean completely dragged for that because if you knew all of this time and you stayed silent you are literally equally as guilty miss morton absolutely yes absolutely yes and her newfound enlightenment has not been met with a whole lot <laughs> of positive feedback now we can look at it a couple ways Sometimes people don't say something because they don't feel like they can for a host of reasons. But, and, and Brie, you know, your your prediction that this year is a year of exposure is sincerely, every day seems to be coming more and more accurate. Um, these are things that have been out there for years, yet people are starting to come forward to solidify those rumors that were rumors for years and years. And so, granted, you know, some people say, well, she she's a woman scorned. And so, of course, she's going to jump on that bandwagon. And it hasn't been proven. So, again, guys, all of this is, this is alleged. These are her words. I'm reading them verbatim from her social media. Nothing has been proven. But, mm -hmm. um, again, she did herself no favors if, in fact, that she's coming forward and has proof that she held it for that many years, particularly allowing Raz B to endure so much public scrutiny for coming forward instead of standing with him because she could have back then. She chose Absolutely. to stay silent. Spread your thoughts. Um, I echo everything you said about that. I don't feel any sympathy for her. Um, you knew about this the whole time. You knew that he was essaying impressionable young men. Um, and you chose not to allegedly. say any uh, allegedly, and you chose not to <laughs> say anything. You just you turned a blind eye, and you wanted to keep living in your lap of luxury lifestyle, no matter at what cost. Um, and did you hear the story about um, Quindon Tarver? No. Well, that was another one that was you know on Chris Stokes' label. He. He was actually on a phone call with Rasby and he was recounting his experience with Marcus Houston saying that, you know, he was essayed by him while Chris Stokes lay on the bed for and watched for his enjoyment, read between the lines. Um, and it, it's just, you have all of these people coming out. And by the way, Quentin Tarver is no longer with us. He passed away in a car accident in 
April of 2021. Oh, wow. Was, yes, which was um, mysteriously close to when that all came out about what he had to say mm -hmm. about Mark Houston. And you'll see that, you know, none of these people um, that these allegations were made against, they really haven't suffered much consequence. You see Marcus Houston living his best life on Tubi. Oh, yeah. Act, uh, act, just not acting good at all. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, on Tubi, yes, you see him doing his thing up there. Um, Chris Stokes is still a very powerful man. Um, it, it just, it sucks. But like I said, this is the, the 2020s. We're all opening our eyes. Um these confirmations are coming out, you know, with Cassie and Diddy, with, you know, now Monye, Monye, how do you pronounce it? Monye. Monye. Yes. Monye and Chris Stokes. And it's just, it's all, like I said, it's not going to, I just feel like this whole entire decade is going to be about exposing the truth. Mm -hmm. And I feel Obviously, like there's going to be way more, and there's going to be way more to come. Um, Yeah. And that's, how I feel, of course, you know, Marcus Houston or Chris Silks, it doesn't look like they've made any, um, have not made any comments. Yes. So I guess we'll see how it continues to play out. Um, hopefully Miss Monyi is somewhere safe. Um, yeah. And hopefully Rasby is too. I think that he, cause he had come out and said, this was all, like he denied it and said that I was, you know, this is all a lie. I took it out on my cousin. This was actually, you know, another person who hurt me and I was just trying to get back or mm. have you. And then, and then, you know, he went and um, there was something else that happened after that. I think there was a, there was an attempt on his life. Oh, wow. And, and then after that, um, he's kind of been hush hush ever mm -hmm. since. And so there's just a lot of weirdness with that. Um, of course, it, you, you just have to keep <laughs> watching. And I, I just feel like there's more that's going to keep unfolding and coming out. Now, I don't think any of the other B2K members have made any comments either. Like, so no. it's, it's still a very new story and it's, Still developing, yeah. Still, yes. And we're going to keep our eyes on it as more information comes forward. We'll definitely report it. Um, again, Mon Monier, if this is in fact true, I hope you stand in your truth and, you know, make sure that justice is served. Yes. So, guys, coming up on the rear on Pop Culture Saturday is none other than Miss Jeannie Ma Jenkins. She has come back to our lineup on Alleged Actually Pop Culture Saturday. And this time is still regarding her pending divorce of said Jeezy. Um, Miss Ma has decided she's asked the court to hold off on enforcing that prenup she had with Jeezy as she claims that she did not have enough time to review it before signing. Okay. She basically asked the judge to either deny the motion to enforce the prenuptial agreement or at least hold off, guys. You know, just give her some time on enforcing it until both parties can exchange info about it. Now, guys, do you remember when they initially separated when one GZ had said that he no longer wished to be with Miss Jenny Ma? How quickly she wanted to enforce the um infidelity clause of the prenup that she didn't get a chance to read. Right. <laughs> that was airtight. You could not look at, breathe at, sneeze at, um, nothing at, or that would be <laughs> considered cheating. She was pretty clear on that. Now, granted, that would be her submission to the prenuptial agreement, particularly what she is alleging that she didn't have time to review, of course, she, and by the way, Jeezy's given name, his, his government name is J. Wayne Jenkins. She yeah. has not had enough ample time to go through his financial disclosures as thoroughly as she would like to in order to make sure that she was getting a fair deal. Now, 
Shout out TMZ. I love to break news first. According to TMZ, Jeannie says in the documents that the smaller window raises significant concerns about the adequacy and thoroughness of the due diligence process. Allegedly, there was only five days before they got married that she had to review this uh, prenup. She believes that um, she has significant reservations about her now ex's financial disclosures. Her legal team says the rapper only handed over one personal financial statement with approximate taxes and insights. She was legally entitled to a thorough examination of all relevant documents. Now, granted, guys, when you're in love and you're about to walk down that aisle, maybe, just maybe, I'm going to play devil's advocate bit, or advocate a little bit. Maybe just maybe she didn't do her due diligence because she thought they were going to be in love forever. But I find it very sus, if you will, a little suspecty, that all of a sudden now she wants to find to comb it. I mean, of course, I think she's tried every angle first to work out the marriage, which is, I mean, again, she should if she can. If it could be repaired, of course. If she's not wanting the marriage to be dissolved, certainly I can see that. But when that didn't work, like I stated, she went for the um, infidelity clause um, as a breach of their prenuptial agreement. And then when that didn't work, now instead of allowing due process to begin, she doesn't want that prenup agreement enforced until or at least not yet until she has some time to come through it. Y'all, I simply cannot. Jenny Ma is ruthless. <laughs> yes. She gonna make sure this divorce is worth her while. That's what it is. She oh says she doesn't it her one time and she ain't gonna do it no more. <laughs> and that part, Rhea, because y'all in her first divorce, <laughs> she got screwed. But Ooh. honestly, her and Jeezy have not been married. Long. I mean... Listen, I, I was with that white dude for I think what ten years almost, or they their marriage was longer. Um, yeah. to say that not to say that you know she's got a daughter with him. Um, yeah. not to say that she's not that that she's not owed something. I'm not saying that. I but I am saying um that she it's not like there's Jenny Ma has her money, Jeezy has his money, Jeezy may have more, but you know as far as their daughter whose name is. Monaco or Monaco. Yeah. Monaco, yeah. Um, certainly she should be taken care of and would be. And I'm mm -hmm. certain Jeezy would make sure of it. It just mm -hmm. it's did you giving... hear did you hear about um because there was he came out and said that she was trying or alleged that she was trying to gatekeep their daughter. Absolutely. Did you, did you... And then she was like, well, no, I'm not trying to gatekeep. I'm just, I just want to make sure that your guns are put up, the same guns that were there while I was living there with you. Um, I want to also make sure that you have fully trained, fully staffed caregivers because, you know, you can't do it. <laughs> so it's just like, she is, she's, and, and which essentially means gatekeeping. Um, but uh -huh. it just... <laughs> She's she's something else. She's like I said, she's trying to make sure this divorce is worth her while. Like y'all, absolutely. And it, it may be that she beats Jeezy down so bad that he subscribes to the notion that it's cheaper to keep her, honey. Absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. I, I mean, think that that's her tactic. She's like, we're gonna we gonna drag this out until yes. you just give in and be like, nah, never mind. Come on. We need to work it out. I mean, I just y'all. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, if if that had been her um, concern off the, the top, then I'd have been rocking with her. But it's like we said, it's like one thing, plan A, plan B, plan C, child. She is trying her best to make sure she gets up in Jeezy's pockets. Okay. She's not going away quietly. That's for sure. So, <laughs> child, I hope that, I mean, it. It's safe, it's banking, everything. She she's coming for it all, and lucky for her, she's got a a Monaco sized um safety net. So <laughs> she's uh, she'll she'll be all right. <laughs> she's gonna be just fine, child. She really will. But um, so guys, that's our lineup for today. Um, we want to thank you guys for tuning in this Saturday with us. 
We ask you guys to continue to like, please comment. If there's something you want us to talk about that we're not, please put it in the comments. Um, give us your feedback in the comments. Please continue to share. Um, our, our subscribers continue to grow and we are very thankful for that. And we know that that is also from the help of our subscribers that are sharing our videos. Thank you so much. I plead with you guys to continue to do so. This is something that we keep working hard at. We're gonna keep coming back. If you want to join us, please come back on Monday for our recap of Money to Medicine. We'll be back on Wednesday with a recap of 90 Day Single Life and the last part of the reunion of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Thursday, come on back for Married at First Sight Denver. And then, of course, by then we're back to another Saturday where we're going to be talking all things pop culture. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Bria, party words? Right.